Hello there, my fellow gloomy doomsayers, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k lore video. Today we are once again returning to learning more on our favorite cults. However, this time it's gonna be with a bit of a caveat. You see, today's topic is a bit more ambiguous in regards to elements of heresy or loyalty. That's because some members of these cults, and why not some of the cults themselves, are actually serving the Imperium through their practices, while others get corrupted by chaos. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic for today are the Death Cults of the Imperium. We're gonna learn what they are, how they are categorized, and even a few famous examples from among their ranks. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? A Death Cult is a group within the Imperium that expresses their worship of the Divine God Emperor through the art and exploration of death. Death and blood underpin human existence in their mind. It is a common truism that only through continued blood sacrifice in the face of a hostile universe will humanity prevail, a sacrifice likened in the Imperial Creed to the bodily sacrifice of the Emperor himself. So, it is in these beliefs that the death cults flourish within the Imperium, a dark shadow of the more readily recognized sects of the Imperial faith, making some of these the most dangerous heretical cults that the Inquisition can encounter. Some are no doubt deluded, corrupted by the ruinous powers, or swayed by far older and more horrible influences, but many still are devout followers of the Golden Throne. To these individuals, every single death, every cut, every welling of blood is an act of worship to the God Emperor. Such death cults can vary widely in purpose, in creed, in scope, in makeup, but even the least suspect of them walk a tight rope between the blessed and the damned. Most of these so-called death cults, despite their many differences, can also be divided into three main categories. The sanguinary cults, the Necrophagic Cults, and the Resurrectionist Cults. Maybe the most commonplace and famous subdivisions of the Death Cults, the Sanguinary Cults focus on the act of bloodshedding itself, the manifold art of killing and the moment of extinction. After owning the skills of the assassins beyond the ken of normal men, such cults are usually tolerated or at least willfully ignored by the Imperial authorities despite their heretical and even vampiric tendencies. This tolerance is because they are known to be implacable in their hatred of humanity's enemies. They even supply the Adeptus Ministorum or the Inquisition with invaluable adepts of murder and fanatical killers loyal to the cause. Some even have shadowy connections to the mysterious Officio Assassinorum, that secret organization which provides unparalleled adepts of murder for the High Lords of Terra. Many sanguinary cults spring into being in the fertile soil provided by the harsh conditions found on many feral or feudal worlds. However, the shadow of the underhive, the viperous intrigues of the noble scord, and even the travails of deep space can equally create the conditions where ritual societies dedicated to the art of the blade, the bullet, or poison can flourish. The Calixis Sector has numerous such sanguinary cults and sacrificial societies present and scattered across many worlds. Indeed, the population of the outcast feudal world of Fervius is largely governed by them. The most famous of these death cultists, without a doubt, are the assassin mystics of the Moritat, which has subcults and cells operating right across the sector and beyond. But we'll get to the Moritat in a few minutes. Necrophagic cults are the most blatantly heretical and terrible of all the death cults, with sects often springing up on worlds ravaged by incessant warfare or planet-wide famine, pandemic disease, or other horrible disasters. In desperation, and often goaded by outside influence, these people's faith and devotion take on an increasingly malign turn with human sacrifice, cannibalism, and necrotic rituals becoming widespread. In such cases, the members of these cults rapidly become irretrievably insane and physically corrupted, and are often the playthings of warp entities, 
while the vile leaders of such cults walk a tight rope between burgeoning malefic power and utter madness. The necrophagic cults are never tolerated by imperial authorities and are hounded into destruction whenever encountered. Within the Calixis sector, necrophagic cults have been known to spring up in the wake of long-burning wars, such as the one on Trench or Malice in more recent years, or on isolated and savage worlds like Endrite. Also, even in the dark space hulks or other vessels in the void, where stricken survivors or desperate stowaways devolve into a form of mutant cannibal known to the voiders as Gilam or Hold Gaunts. But of all these stories, none can compare with the ancient stories of the appalling Sene clan of Dusk, whose half-mythical ghoulish histories have given the children of the Calixis sector nightmares for centuries. Rarely encountered but insidious in nature, the resurrectionist cults ultimately seek to conquer the secrets of life and death itself. Some of them preach a doctrine of the Emperor's triumph over death and the conquest of human weakness while others entreat with darker masters, pursuing utterly forbidden science, or hiding baleful xenos or warp spawn influences at their heart. Often they espouse the goal of obtaining physical immortality for the faithful, and will go to unspeakable lengths to attain their ends. More so, even than the sanguinary cults, these groups attract insane and desperate individuals among their ranks, those who have already lost everything become the most degenerate of heretics, or follow the wildest of deviant creeds. Some resurrectionists even practice ritual revivification to indoctrinate their members. The most extreme examples of such sects believe that the Emperor's plan for humanity is to follow him into a blessed immortality of the flesh. They even claim that it is possible through the use of utterly forbidden archaeotech to free the Emperor from the Golden Throne to walk among his people again, dead but alive and everlasting. Such cults are deeply hated by both the Adeptus Ministorum and the Adeptus Mechanicus, and must throw up a murderous veil of secrecy and superstition in order to simply survive. Some notable individual death cults include the Sons of Dispatter. These guys only care for money. For them, every life has a price, and only the station of the target and the ease of the kill mitigates the cost. This group started life as a mercenary company, taking part in the vicious trade wars flaring up in the Calixis sector. It slowly coalesced into a modern shape, but with this refinement, it evolved to become a freelance guild of assassins providing skilled murderers, duelists, and saboteurs to anyone who could pay them. Over many years, the Suns have built a well-deserved reputation for reliability and lethality. Their reach extends outwards from their center of operations on Malthy to almost every important world of the sector. While their only loyalty is to the guilt they have been paid, the organization does consider its contracts to be sacrosanct and inviolate realizing long ago that an organization of turncoat assassins would not have a very long lifespan. Thus, any member of the Suns who betrays a contract better hide their tracks very carefully, or risk the wrath of their own fellows. The Inquisition itself is not above hiring an assassin trained by the Sons of Dispatter, valuing their skills and predictable motivation. The Astral Knives as members of a proscribed imperial death cult, the Astral Knives must keep their beliefs secret to everyone but their most trusted confidants. A secret society within the close society of the Voidborn, the Astral Knife cult takes it upon themselves, as a sacred duty no less, to keep humanity safe during voyages through the warp. If a voyage suffers, dark portents are witnessed or danger draws close in the warp, the Astral Knives carry a ritual sacrifice to ensure the Emperor's protection. Those most obviously unclean targets, like mutants or psychers, are selected first, but almost anyone could be selected in consultation with ritual foretelling. Some 50 years ago, the Ordos Calixis declared the Astral Knives a heretical cult, after it was found that worshippers of the ruinous powers had infiltrated large parts of the cult and a concerted purge was undertaken. Despite this, the entrenched and widely dispersed death cult lives on, 
although scattered and in far fewer numbers than before. A cultist of the astral knives is usually born rather than made, with certain void families having long traditions of involvement with the cult. Nor are they ravening killers. They are taught instead that their murders, often made to seem as accidents, are a dreadful but necessary duty. Some members even grieve over their victims when appropriate, although many seek to own their skills further by taking payment for the use of their skills among the Voidborn, particularly if a target is a so-called dirtsider or not of the ship. Some more radical elements of the Inquisition have chosen, where possible, to absorb elements of the surviving untainted astral knives into their service, as skillful spies and killers, and the knives, for their part, are keen to prove their faith. The Moritat The Moritat is another imperial death cult, supposedly far older even than the Calixis sector itself. Some legends say that it was brought to Calixis by adherents secreted among the forces of the Angevin Crusade which carved this sector into being. Others claim it was already seated in place, waiting for the Imperials when they came. Regardless, the Moritat lean heavily on the Imperial Creed, albeit with a very bloody and mystical interpretation of the dogma. It teaches that only through the merciless application of violence and death can the Imperium be sustained, the weak and corrupt winnowed out, and the Emperor's own great sacrifice honored. In organization, the Moritat is supremely difficult to infiltrate or pin down, operating in independent cells, each one led by a single master or mistress, seated in recruiting grounds such as underhives, feral worlds, or war zones. The Moritat selects those who have already been marked by tragedy and bloodshed to serve the Emperor as a bringer of death to his enemies. They take these individuals from a very young age and forge their bitterness and hate into a weapon. Training recruits relentlessly in the arts of destruction, deception and bloodletting, while at the same time indoctrinating them into their own brand of imperial faith and the mysteries of the cult. The Moritat aspirants who survive this education become full members of the cult and are sent out alone into the wider Imperium. This is a process they call the travail, to own their skills as assassins, vigilantes and peerless duelists, believing that only through continuous conflict and bloody experience can they become supreme in their arts and worthy to serve the Emperor. This cult's existence also seems to benefit from some measure of toleration from the Imperium's higher powers, a fact that leads many to whisper that the Moritat's true sponsorship lies in the distant and dreaded temples of the official Assassinorum itself. For a Moritat assassin, the chance to serve the Inquisition is indeed a blessed thing, dealing death to the God Emperor's enemies first hand, and also a proving ground where they can test their skills against the most dire and powerful opposition imaginable. Many Inquisitors in turn regard the Moritat assassins as an invaluable resource, monsters of their own to fight the many other monsters they must challenge. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the Imperial Death Cults for today. I did face a tiny challenge of my own with this episode, as I couldn't really figure out what playlist to put it in. However, with the Astral Knives and the Moritat being more or less devout servants of the Imperium, I decided to not stick this in the Forces of Chaos playlist. Maybe when I make an official Assassinorum series, I can move it there. What are your thoughts on all these death cults? Do you think they can be useful, or are they too dangerous to be allowed to exist? Let us all know what you think in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor protects.